Your Wi-Fi network, the backbone of your smart home. Now, routers are not really that much fun to talk about, but this could be the most important piece of your smart home. So it's important not to skip over this step when building out your smart home. With so many options like mesh, Wi-Fi 6, uh, HomeKit routers, what is the most important things that you should be looking for or worried about when choosing a new router for your smart home? We're gonna talk about all that and more today. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday right here. This video here is going to be a part of my HomeKit 101 series. You can find that playlist here on YouTube uh, where we're covering all the basics to get you started using HomeKit to build out your smart home. Now today, of course, we are talking about routers, which is something I get asked about often. Now, spoiler alert, I am not going to tell you which router is the best and which one you should go buy. We're going to keep this simple like I always try to do. And instead, I'm going to give you some good things to think about and consider when you are looking for a router for your smart home. Because the fact is, there's lots of options out there. I'm going to share with you what I'm using, what I have used, you know, the pros and cons of the many different options out there. You know, we got mesh networks, Wi-Fi 6, or the even newer Wi-Fi 6E processor and RAM options, HomeKit secure networking, all these different options make it a little confusing. So I'm gonna try to break it down to help you the next time you are in the market for a new router. And as always, I'm gonna put chapters down below uh, where you can skip around to any certain parts of this video if you want. All right, so first up, I do got to give a big shout out to Linksys for sending me their MX10 Velop AX Whole Home Wi-Fi 6 system. Whew, that's quite a mouthful. Uh, so again, thank you to Linksys for sending me this over so that I could try out Wi-Fi 6 for the first time. Now, Linksys does make some very nice routers and are actually one of the first companies alongside Eero to roll out HomeKit support for some of their routers. Now, this router here does not currently have HomeKit support. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, this here is the Wi-Fi system that I've been using for the past few months in my HomeKit setup. And prior to that, I was actually using a Netgear Orbi for you know well over a year. I'll talk more about my experience with both of these here in a minute, and I will also put affiliate links to everything that I mentioned down below in case you wanna check those out. All right, now, first things first, it is important to note that the plan and the speeds that you get from your internet service provider do make a difference. For example, if you're paying for 100 megabytes download speeds, you're not gonna see gigabit download speeds, period. Doesn't matter what your router is, but you should be seeing 100 megabytes down, for example, if that's what you're paying for. And while we're talking about internet service providers, if you are still using one of those modem router combos, you know, provided by your ISP, it's probably time to toss that thing out and get you a decent router for your smart home. Most of the time, these combination units are not very good, and you'll see lots of benefits from upgrading to a dedicated Wi-Fi router of your own. You will still need the modem provided by your ISP, but you should be able to get your own router that will probably be better than what they are providing. All right, so let's talk about mesh Wi-Fi. These have become very popular in the last few years, and I do usually recommend mesh Wi-Fi for most smart homes. So what are they? Mesh Wi-Fi or whole home Wi-Fi systems consist of a main router that connects directly to your modem and a series of satellite modules or nodes that connect to that main router. These nodes, as we'll call them from here on out, are placed around your house for full Wi-Fi coverage. And these mesh Wi-Fi systems work much better at removing dead spots than those old Wi-Fi range extenders you know, of the past. Plus, they are all part of a single wireless network and share the same SSID and password, unlike traditional Wi-Fi routers. Now, any router that you buy these days should at least be a dual band router 
meaning it supports the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. And nowadays, tri-band routers are becoming much more common also. For example, this Velop MX10 system here is a tri-band. Often that third band is uh, usually another five gigahertz band that is used as a dedicated backhaul between the different nodes, which should help speeds without affecting your other devices uh, and things like that on your network. And one thing I personally like about most of these mesh Wi-Fi systems is that the 2.4 and the five gigahertz bands share the same SSID and passwords by default. Now this can be beneficial in my opinion in a smart home setup. Your router should be smart enough to automatically add devices, you know, such as your smart home devices to the appropriate band. For example, most smart home accessories still require that 2.4 gigahertz band and your router should be able to automatically connect devices to that 2.4 gigahertz band without any issues. And it's worth noting that some of these routers do have the ability to separate the bands. If that is something that is required or is important to you, you might just wanna check beforehand because not all of them do allow this. The Velop MX-10 here that I have does have that option if I choose, but for me, everything has worked just fine by keeping them combined using the same SSID and password. Now, another nice thing about most mesh systems is that they are modular, so to speak. So you can start with just one or two nodes and add more down the road as needed. So this could be great if you have a smaller house or apartment and you upgrade or you move or whatever. You can always add more nodes down the road as you kind of expand your house. Okay, so what about Wi-Fi 6? Is it important? Does it make a difference? Well, these are all questions that I had as well. So Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax is the latest generation of Wi-Fi standard. So you'll often hear claims like four times faster speeds with Wi-Fi 6 technology and true gigabit speeds throughout your home. Well, again, unless you are paying for gigabit speeds from your internet service provider, you won't see those speeds you'll only get speeds as fast as whatever you're paying for. So that's something important to keep in mind. And another thing, to take full advantage of Wi-Fi 6, not only does your router need to support Wi-Fi 6, but the devices connecting to the router must also support Wi-Fi 6. And quite frankly, there aren't that many devices out there still that support Wi-Fi 6. You know, newer iPhones like the iPhone 11 and 12 do have support for Wi-Fi 6, but still very few computers, laptops, or streaming devices yet support it. But as time moves on, we will begin to see more and more devices that do have support for Wi-Fi 6 as this is the latest Wi-Fi standard. And to make things even more complicated, we now have routers available with what's called Wi-Fi 6E. Okay, so Wi-Fi 6E basically extends Wi-Fi 6 into the 6 gigahertz frequency band, adding to the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands that Wi-Fi already uses, which we just talked about. But here again, your hardware will need to be able to connect to the 6 gigahertz band in order to take advantage of this. And seeing that happen is even further out. Hell, like I said, most of our smart home accessories still required that old 2.4 gigahertz band anyways. Okay, and speaking of smart home accessories, what about HomeKit integration for your router? Well, as you may know, some routers nowadays have support for HomeKit. So first of all, what does that mean? What exactly can you do with a router that supports HomeKit? Well, in a nutshell, HomeKit on your router will give you access to enhanced privacy controls for your HomeKit accessories, which, you know, is pretty awesome from a security perspective. You know, basically you can prevent your HomeKit accessories in your home from talking to the internet. The router can firewall off each of your accessories, so even if one were to be compromised, it wouldn't be able to access your other devices or personal information. And the cool thing is that even if you block outside internet access, your devices should still work as they can all kind of communicate within your home between your Apple devices. 
So you will need a HomeKit hub in order to take advantage of this feature, um, it's worth noting. But currently the only routers that have support for HomeKit is the Eero routers and the Linksys Velop Wi-Fi 5 routers, I believe. Now Linksys has claimed that HomeKit support will be coming to the Velop Wi-Fi 6 line, but they haven't promised any uh, dates or time frame for that yet. Okay, so with all that said, what else is important to look for when you're searching for a new router? Well, I would also take a look at the processor and RAM that's available on the router. You know, we're using our Wi-Fi for more and more these days between smart home stuff, streaming, downloading, gaming. So for that reason, you probably wanna get a multi-core processor and as much RAM as you can. This Linksys Velop that I have here, just as an example, has a 2.2 gigahertz quad-core processor with one gigabyte of RAM. Now this is definitely you know, on the higher end of this type of stuff, but that processor and RAM is probably something you wanna pay attention to when you're you know, looking for a new router. Another thing I would consider is whether or not the router has a decent mobile app that you can use to access and configure your router. Most decent consumer level routers should have a mobile app nowadays. This can be really useful when configuring or troubleshooting your network. It also makes it real easy to see what devices are connected to your network. I've got a teenager and they hate this feature because I can always tell when they're connecting a device to my network that they should not have. Also, you can turn the internet off to specific devices, configure the guest network, and even access advanced settings in the app if it's a good app. I do like the Linksys app because it does give me most, if not all of the settings for my router that I can configure anytime right there on my phone in the app. Many of these also include additional features like parental controls and sometimes even network security options. You know, so really take a look to see what all options are available through the app of the routers that you're looking into. And some other things you might wanna consider are the ethernet ports available on the routers or the access points that you purchase, as well as the support and warranty provided by the manufacturer. Some of these will be better than others. Some provide lifetime support while others provide limited support and sometimes even require an additional fee. All right, so are we even more confused now? I hope not. Um, let me just share with you my experiences with routers, Wi-Fi 6, HomeKit support, um, and many options as it relates you know, to upgrading. So for over a year, before I switched to the newer system by Linksys, I did use the Netgear Orbi Mesh Wi-Fi with just one main router and a small little access point. It was not very expensive and this actually worked well for me. You know, I was paying for 100 down, 10 up from my ISP spectrum and I was for the most part getting those speeds with very little issues. I actually wanted to try out Wi-Fi 6 and see if there was any real changes. Now, this Linksys Wi-Fi 6 system has better specs in almost every way from what I was using before, but it also costs quite a bit more. Now, it's also worth noting that the Netgear Orbi you know, line also has some higher end systems similar to this one in their lineup as well. Uh, they even have Wi-Fi 6 options also over there. Uh, you know, but honestly, I really didn't notice a difference when I upgraded to the system. Now, why is that? Well, regarding the Wi-Fi 6, as mentioned earlier, you need Wi-Fi 6 enabled devices to even utilize it. And yeah, I've got an iPhone 12 Pro, which does have Wi-Fi 6 capability, but I mean, I'm not really sitting around the house watching 4K movies on my iPhone, typically. So my Apple TVs or other streaming devices that I have here aren't even able to benefit from Wi-Fi 6 yet. In addition, I was already getting the speeds that I was paying for from my internet service provider, you know, with that cheaper Netgear Orbi. So getting a better router wasn't gonna improve that since I was already being capped at that 100 megabits down per second download speeds by Spectrum. Now, if I had a crappy router beforehand and wasn't, you know, able to get good speeds, the speeds that I would expect based on my plan, um, then I would have definitely noticed a difference. Now I have since upgraded my service plan to get 400 down, 20 up, and this Linksys router has done a great job so far at handling these speeds. I'm still waiting for fiber to be available in my area, you know, hopefully one day. 
So why would you wanna get a more expensive router these days with Wi-Fi 6? Because the Wi-Fi 6 routers are more expensive. Well, the answer is pretty easy and that is future proofing. And that's sort of what I had in mind when I upgraded mine. See, as Wi-Fi 6 is the new standard, there will inevitably be more and more devices hitting the market you know, that support it. Now, what about that Wi-Fi 6E that I mentioned earlier? Well, I think we are so far out from actually having any devices that can actually connect to that six gigahertz band that I wouldn't even bother with it personally, you know, especially as it relates to home, you know, home kit or your smart home. Again, most of these devices are still using that old 2.4 gigahertz band anyways. Okay, so what about HomeKit? Why wouldn't I want the other Linksys Vela Wi-Fi 5 system, for example, that already has HomeKit secure networking support? Well, that sort of goes back to the future proofing. Again, just for me personally, for one, I'm pretty confident Linksys will update their Wi-Fi 6 routers, you know, the one that I have, to support HomeKit one day. Uh, now, I never buy a product based on a promise of HomeKit support, but Linksys has stated that they do plan to bring it to their Wi-Fi 6 line, and they've already done it with their other routers, so I think it is something that will probably happen one day. And it's a feature that I'm okay living without for a little while longer. So I did choose kind of the future-proofing over that immediate HomeKit support. That's just what I found important. So it's really about determining what's important to you. If that HomeKit secure networking support is a must for you, then go for it. Go ahead and get a router that has support for it. It's an awesome feature, I don't blame you. And I should note that there are lots of decent mesh Wi-Fi systems out there. You know, again, I'm not gonna tell you which one is the best. Many people are very happy with the Eero and Google mesh routers, but personally, I wouldn't want a router that's owned by Amazon or Google. That's just me, call me crazy. Lastly, I do want to mention that changing out your Wi-Fi router can be a huge, huge pain in the <laughs> particularly if you've already got a lot of smart home devices. Now you may hear when you get a new router, just set it up with the exact same SSID name and password as your previous router, and all your devices will you know, automatically connect. And yeah, that does work sort of sometimes. For me, this worked for probably about half of my devices, but there was still a number of them that I had to remove and then re-add to HomeKit, which does suck. Now, you might be one of those lucky ones that is able to change out your router, use the same SSID and password without any hiccups and everything will just reconnect. That would be awesome, but it can be quite the process if not, so just be prepared to be patient. I actually had some major uh, speed issues at first with my new router, but I got Linksys support on the phone, which was great by the way, and actually within just a few minutes after resetting the device prioritization settings, everything was working just great and I was able to get the speeds that I was expecting. Another thing you can try if you already have a big HomeKit setup is using one of those third-party HomeKit apps you know, to back up your HomeKit setup or your HomeKit codes like HomePass, uh, the Home Plus app, or a controller for HomeKit. Maybe they could come through and save you in a crisis. Hopefully you don't have to go there. So all this really just emphasizes really how important it is to establish a good Wi-Fi network early on in your smart home setup when possible. If you do decide it's time for a new router, use the information from this video to help you decide what's most important to you. Is it future proofing? Is it home kit support? Is it the cost? Maybe brand name? You know, at the end of the day, I think as long as you get a decent router made by a reputable brand, you will be good. Probably anything is gonna be better than that router modem combo provided by your internet service provider. Now, if you have any questions or anything I forgot to cover, or if you have any tips or suggestions for others that I didn't mention here, feel free to drop those down below in the comments. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button for me. That really does help out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't for new HomeKit videos every Sunday right here. And consider hitting that join button below to become a channel member and join our little HomeKit community over there on Discord. You'll also get some other perks like behind the scenes and early access to new videos before anyone else. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. Until next time, we'll see y'all later.